All right, the left of four, the Kentucky Derby tomorrow. Uh, so that means we welcome in Brad Thomas, uh, who you can see down at Monmouth and uh, is back. Everyone was wondering if Brad would come back to do the race, the races, the Triple Crown race this year. Well, he will, and he's here right now. Brad, welcome. How are you? I'm, I'm great. I'm glad to be here, Mike. Good, Brad. All right, uh, give me an overview first before we start on the Derby. Give me the overview on the Derby. Well, there's a potential absolute superstar in this race in Justify. I think he's at least a notch, maybe a notch and a half more talented than Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh. Uh, this horse has limitless potential, but he is inexperienced. And this is a deeper, more talented field than the ones that were faced by other potential stars like American Pharaoh himself, Spectacular Bid, Affirmed, Seattle Sloop. Even Secretariat, Secretariat had to beat Sham, who was superb, and Forgo. But Forgo wasn't really Forgo by that time. He became great later on. Uh, the rest of the field Secretariat beat was not that good. This field could be really, really nice, and it's really deep. And uh, Justify has a lot of in- inexperience to overcome. Justify, who Baffert has said could be as talented as his wonder horse of just a few years ago, said that uh, he expects big things. The horse did not run as a two-year-old, which is an enormous strike against. Also has only had one race over a mile and also may be compromised uh, in the pace. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Now, I don't, I don't take anything away from Baffert. I've seen him do too many crazy things. We know how good he can be, especially when he has a horse. We've seen him do wondrous things with these horses. So it really makes for a fascinating race from that standpoint. It truly does. This horse could be great, but it's the Derby. There's 19 other horses. He's beaten 14 horses in his entire career. Now he has to beat 19 of them in one race, in a different kind of race, too. All right, let's start from the, from the rail out. You can make it real quick on some if you want. Ferenz Fire. On general principle, Mike, I root for breeder owners in this game, but this horse is distance limited, has raced a lot in an effort to win derby points, and his trainer, superb as he is, is best with more time between starts. All right, free drop Willie. His best races have come when he's been well set up against second and third rate fields. He did make good middle moves while having tough trips in his last two, but even going shorter versus average bunches, he's had trouble finishing strongly and running through the wire. I don't like him running longer against tougher. I'm only going to use him third or fourth on my old ticket. All right, let me break for a second, Brad, with this, and I'll say we'll have more on it as soon as the uh, we finish on the Derby with Brad. The Mets have requested that Matt Harvey agree to a minor league assignment. He refused to accept it, accept the minor league assignment, so he will be DFA'd. We will have more on it in the uh, minutes after we finish our uh, Derby. So, And it doesn't come as any stunning news, so the Mets and Matt Harvey have reached the impasse most of us thought they would reach. He uh, he was asked to go to the minors. He refused. We'll take it from there as soon as uh, we finish with our derby uh, information. Here we go. So from Free Drive with Willie, uh, trained by Dale Romans, we go to uh, a horse that, a son of a horse he trained in Shackleford, Promises Fulfilled. This horse has unbridled speed, Mike, but he has issues. He sometimes overheats pre-race. He sometimes fails to turn smoothly in race. But if he breaks, he guarantees that this year's race will not be an early walk-a-thon like a lot of recent derbies have been. That could change up the results. We've seen some procession-type races in the recent past since the point system has eliminated the uh, two-year-old sprinters. This horse could truly be the key in the 2018 derby because if he doesn't break for some reason, and because he has these issues, he might not. If he doesn't break, that could really help justify and allow that one to just gallop along on the lead. But as a horse himself promises fulfilled, he's the likeliest last place finisher. All right, the number four is Flame Away. He has static figures. He has nine starts already on his resume. I love the fact that trainer Mark Cassie runs his horses, uh, but the promise of sterner pace pressure uh, makes Derby Day improvement really unlikely to me for this horse. I think the combination of the distance and the pace will get him. I'm only going to use him third or fourth on my all tickets. The five is the first one from Pletcher Audible. He's superb. 
extremely talented. He's a middle distance horse with stylistic versatility, multiple gears, and explosive acceleration. The versatility allowed him to take advantage of opposite pace and buy setups in the grade two Holy Bowl two back and the grade one Florida Derby last time. His gears permitted him to make two moves in the Holy Bowl and to sprint away from a blind switched Hopberg in the Florida Derby. And his acceleration blew up in both races with big bursts and upper stretch. But while he has a solid foundation, excellent race spacing for a trainer who really likes that. He's an outside preferring horse. He draws inside. Both sides of his pedigree, too, strongly suggest that a mile and an eighth is the far reaches of his stamina. Now he has to go an eighth further. In general, horses like Audible on dirt, who have gears, have acceleration, they're compromised the further they go because the added distance dulls the sharpness of their moves. Also, Audible was extremely mature physically by March. He just was massive in comparison to many of his rivals, just super muscular, powerful. Others here, though, might have more May upside. These horses change dramatically at this time of year. I really respect this horse's talent. He's really good, but I don't think he can get the distance. I will, however, have him used all over in the second, third, and fourth slots. Good Magic has got everything you'd want. He's trained by Chad Brown. He's a son of Curlin who has become one of the real premier classic sires. He cost a million dollars. He was well meant last year. How about good magic? He has a shot. I'd like to see more explosive talent for him from him, though, this year. He touted himself last season with an excellent effort when hard used and premature moving in the Champagne. Then as a maiden, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, stretching out the two turns, benefited from a good pace set up and inside-out trip that, that day. He was very wide, but still was dull, I thought, off the bench in the grade two fountain of youth, but foot issues early in the year interfered with his training. He moved forward despite another wide trip in the grade two bluegrass, stretching out to nine furlongs, but only be at a very average group, and he lacked the wow factor in that race, Mike. He failed to really pull away late from three rivals who were respectively very hard used, drifting wildly through the stretch and badly bothered. And he switched back to his left lead late, his incorrect left lead. I think that was a focus issue. He just wasn't wound fully tight. Chad Brown, though, as you mentioned, a master with developing horses. Uh, he attempts to replicate the Good Magic's dramatic third-time form cycle improvement last year. Brown was a super fifth in last year's Derby, exiting the bluegrass with third off a layoff, but overmatched and poorly posted practical joke who really outran his ability in that race. And Brown won the Preakness with fourth-time start of cloud computing. So this is what he does. This horse is going to have his A-plus race on Saturday. He's been training great. He's posted to get a good trip from mid-pack. I really don't fully believe that he's good enough to win this race. Like I said, I just haven't seen that explosion, but he is getting better. He's a big-time exact factor. All right, Justify is the horse of the moment, uh, son of Scat Daddy, uh, $500,000 yearling, who has lightly raced, did not lay down. Uh, Brad, is the story here that did not race, it was just late developing. Uh, the horse is a, uh, I don't have the date he was born, so you must have that. I don't know if he was an early or late foal, uh, but he, was it developmental or did he have an injury? Why he didn't race as a two-year-old? He was a March fall, so he wasn't. He was relatively early. Uh, I think, from what I heard, understand, I think he had a minor setback in some of his early training, and it was just decided that he needed more time. But he just is a massive horse. He's a big frame. Uh, he has a backside that would make swimsuit models. Uh, wish that they had. Uh, he's just an incredible physical specimen, and I think it was just shrewd people who were taking their time with a horse who they knew was really, really good. He's smart, he's smooth, he's the complete package. It's just a matter of whether or not he has the foundation. He runs fast effortlessly, he toys with his competition, he always look, looks like there's more to give. Uh, the lack of two-year-old foundation and seasoning is a big deal, though, for me. I'm still old school in that regard. I think the two-year-old training helps you. I think the two-year-old experience helps you to deal with whatever you might have to deal with in a race like the Derby. He only beat 14 horses in three small placid field races in California. Now he has to face 19 horses in one wild rodeo. How is he going to react to real pace pressure? There was no pace at all in the Santa Anita Derby. He was allowed to just walk on the lead, something we disgracefully see far too often in grade one races. How is he going to deal with bumping uh, out of the gate? Uh, how is he going to deal with early pinching? How is he going to deal with first turn traffic? How is he going to deal with a kickback sandstorm if he doesn't really break well. I don't know. And as great as he is, trainer Bab Baffert doesn't know either. 
Now, maybe Justify can just sit out there disdainfully, very wide and in the clear, while relatively close to fast fractions that might sting him a little bit, but still, because he's such a great talent, power gallop a deep derby field into submission. Maybe he can, but I'm not going to risk eating a short price finding out myself. I'm going to make use of such a great talent in all wagering spots, but I tell you what, I'm also going to have plenty of tickets would justify off the board completely. Do you think he has to have the lead in this race? No. And in fact, I think if Promises Fulfilled doesn't break, I think he might very well go to the lead if Smith really plays it aggressively. Sometimes Smith does. Sometimes Smith can be overly patient. But lately, he's been playing things aggressively with horses like this. If Promises Fulfilled doesn't go, Smith will. If not, I do think this horse can sit outside and gallop. I don't think he needs the lead. What I think will be his problem, though, is if he gets behind horses for some reason and has to pass a whole bunch or has to get dirt kicked in his face. All right. The news I gave you a minute ago, Matt and Harvey and the Mets look like they're parting ways. I'll have that for you as soon as we finish with Brad here. Brad, lone sailor, the number eight horse. He needs a perfectly timed ride to be a factor at a mile and a quarter. He has a big move when he gets pace, but he does hang. He is, however, in very skilled hands that have always liked him, and he is really improving. Uh, the connections are realistic. They know he can't win. They'll be thrilled with a piece, and I think he might be ridden to finish third or fourth, so I'm using him there. Bill Mott has Hofberg, a Judd Monty Farm. How about Hofberg, a son of Tappet? One of the real talents here. I wish he was bigger and stronger, less prone to pre-race jitters and gate trouble and had more real dirt on the maternal side of his pedigree. But what he does have is real talent and stamina, real pedigree, two-year-old activity, and massive three-year-old and two-turn improvement. He was the only well-off-the-pace winner from six dirt races when he made two very wide moves to break his maiden over a sharp subsequent Keeneland winner. And then he stepped way up in class a mere four weeks later to loom up mid-stretch versus the very good audible in the grade one Florida Derby before he was outsprinted late by that rival. But the three-length margin between them could have been much smaller if Hartberg had not run into a position-losing blind switch on the second turn after he spurred it from way back and actually passed well in front of the more patiently ridden audible. Watch that replay carefully, and you will see that move indicating Hartberg's talent. Now, subsequently, he had to play a game of re-catch-up with audible, and that blunted Hartberg's final kick. But with one unbroken run and another race under his belt, he has huge mile-and-a-quarter derby day upside. Maybe he ultimately will prove better on turn because of his breeding on the dam side and his size. But if he keeps it together pre-race, his ability to go wide and still finish makes him a win threat and all over use for me. I just wish he had a bit more seasoning. All right, my boy Jack the 10. He has 10 races of foundation more than anyone else in this race, and nine of them have been around two turns. And horse for horse, raw talent level for raw talent level in his barn. No trainer in the world I agree. is better with developing dirt horses than Keith the He's very Absolutely. good. He's very good. And they don't cost a whole lot either. Uh, now, this horse was pace, bias, trip, and wet seal conditions uh, helped in the grade three southwest. But I still love the way he exploded late and galloped out powerfully. And while pace and the two-term bias also helped him in the Louisiana Derby, I hated that ride. My boy Jack's move there was way too wide and way too rushed. In relation to the long fairground stretch, the grade one-and-a-half caliber older horse, Good Samaritan, rallied to win the grade two New Orleans handicap that same day at the same distance. And my boy Jack's pace figure and finishing split blend matched up very favorably for a March three-year-old in his first mile-and-an-eighth race. And even more favorably from the three-quarters to the mile before Good Samaritan's better time ride allowed him to finish really well while my boy Jack's excessive turn burst caused him to flatten. Subsequently, my boy Jack required all the short Keeneland stretch to beat the promising telekinesis, a horse to watch for the Preakness maybe, in the grade three Lexington that my boy Jack needed to get derby points. Even with a quick second straight quick turnaround, my boy Jack's sturdy base, I think, will keep him in form. And his underrated kick, to me, make him, make him an upset win threat if he gets an inspired ride and something crazy happens pace-wise. He's going to be a win bet saver for me, an all-over use. And if the track comes up wet and there are showers in the forecast, they come at the right time and they're hard enough. If the track is wet and sealed, I am going to dive in on my boy Jack, and I'm going to try to make a score because I think under those conditions, he can win.
Uh, Bolt De Oro, uh, a lot of people last year thought he would be the Derby favorite. Uh, he has done little wrong. He hasn't won the two big races that he's been in in his life, but he's been right around everything. What about Bolt De Oro? He's absolutely one of the key horses in betting this year's Derby, Mike. On PPs and figs, he's clearly the second-ranked horse in the division. He possesses top-class juvenile sprint and route form, and now has thrown off a layoff following two sharp rifles versus really high-quality rivals. He has a lot of the checks in the right place. But has he advanced from the high-water mark of his freakish grade one front-runner score last September? That's the question. Yes, his troubled start from an impossible post and subsequent very wide trip ruined his chances in the B.C. Juvenile. He ran really well there, and he did have bias and pace issues, respectively, in his two 2018 races. But both Doro was slow to train on early this year. He shows only average sophomore physical development. This horse really hasn't blossomed physically, and he just hasn't finished or galloped out with triple crown authority in his last two. Admittedly, against really strong competition, but I still would have liked to have seen him close the deal more strongly. He was late-changing leads in the Santa Anita Derby, and I'm just not a fan of his fast, early, slow, late workout style. My gut tells me that his two 2018 efforts have been more draining than they have been developmental. I don't think he can improve right now. I believe he has a strong chance of being completely off the board. This is a really good field, a really deep field. You have to make tough choices. I'm going to throw him out of the first two slots. I'm going to throw him off most of my tickets. I'm going to play against him. I'm only going to use him defensively in the third and fourth slots on my all tickets. Uh, Entice the number 12. He's tactical, and he has a grinding style, and that says he's a true dirt route horse, but his PPs imply that nine furlongs or less might be his preference. He's huge size-wise, and overall trainer Kieran McLaughlin's program uh, just is better later in the year, it seems, with horses like this. The combination of live fractions and the stretch of 10 furlongs might not work for him right now. I'm going to limit him to the third and fourth slots and only on my all tickets, but this is a horse who's better than a lot of people think. The Derby just isn't the right race for him right now, in my opinion. The 13, Brazaro. He has tactical Bravazo, versatility. I should say, Bravazo. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. He won't get many calls in the race. His tactical versatility is a plus, but he still is going to have to improve two levels to even contend for a piece. I'm only going to use him on my all tickets deep, deep underneath. Anybody can be third or fourth in this race with the, with the right uh, setup. So I will have some tickets with all, but no elective ones. He is trained by the ageless uh, Wayne Lucas, which is why people will notice. That's about it. Mendelssohn. Uh, you've heard a lot about Mendelssohn. He comes over, obviously, Aiden O'Brien, uh, Scat Daddy, who cost $3 million. How about Mendelssohn? Well, I turned on the music channel when I woke up this morning and Mendelssohn was playing, so I don't know if that means anything. Maybe it is. But, Maybe it is. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I didn't like it because I don't like the horse. Uh, he absolutely freaked the last time out in his dirt debut in the Mon 316's uh, UAE Derby. Uh, he was sent hard, though, in that race, really hard, asked for his life to ride the wave of a powerful speed bias. He polarized a field that was of dubious main track quality. He's by the versatile late great sire Scat Daddy. He's a half-brother, super dirt man beholder. He has unlimited upside on his newfound surface. He's trained by Aiden O'Brien, international superstar who knows how to get horses ready for any type of race anywhere. He's third off a layoff, has seven total races of foundation in three different countries. He's been successful going longer than anyone else in this field has even run. But while he can sit a little bit on turf, he's unproven proven accepting dirt in his face on the main track, and he might lack the United States unbridled speed to guarantee avoidance of that possible trauma in this matchup. Mendelssohn, he's a very good horse. I like him as a horse. I just don't like him in this race. But unlike past foreign entrants, his winning this race would not totally shock me. But this is a super high-quality derby field. There's capable speed horses in it. I have to play against some horses who are going to take action. I'm going to play against him. Only use him third or fourth in my all tickets, not on my main tickets. Let the international horses beat me until they do. Talking derby with Brad Thomas. We'll have the latest on what's going on with Matt Harvey as soon as we finish. Instilled regard to number 15. He was exposed when pace bias and trip compromise in the soft grade two risen start when I thought he still should have been able to sustain a better run. Uh, he ran great in the uh, grade one Los Alamitos Futurity at age two when he was troubled, but he was still third best in that race. Uh, this horse has had trouble getting over the hump. Uh, after, the Louisiana, after the risen start, uh, he came off a little bit of a freshening, 
ran in the grade one Santanita Derby against the best in the division. Uh, he was absolutely no factor when Pace compromised in that race. But I don't hold that so much against him. But what disturbed me was he couldn't catch the very average recent maiden winner core beliefs for third. Now, a mile and a quarter, I do think will help this horse. I do think the longer it goes, the better he's going to be. But I just don't think he's ready to win at this level or even be second. Uh, I'll use him third or fourth on my all tickets, but I just haven't seen the physical maturity also out of this horse that I would like to have seen. All right, how about the unbeaten 4-for-4 uh, four four Arkansas Derby winning Magnum Moon? I love this horse's talent. He started his career 36 days earlier and has one more race of experience, which are both positives. But otherwise, he's almost an East Coast slash Midwestern mirror image of Justify. He's a big, framey horse, uh, not as athletically built as Justify. Uh, his lines are a little bit sharper than Justify's smooth ones. Uh, he has a long, loping stride. He's still a bit gawky. He was fast enough, though, the winner's debut at six furlongs. He was pliable enough to rate stretching out as a second-time starter, really showing off his good mind. Two back in the grade two Rebel, he just galloped disdainfully very wide throughout before striking into the stretch. And then in the grade one Arkansas Derby, he did basically the same thing but on the lead when a good draw and a paceless scenario essentially gave him the race on a silver platter. But now he has an outside post, plenty of legit, opposing early foot against him and takes a big step up in competition. The Arkansas Derby wasn't the strongest. That's going to force Magnum Moon to run a very different race. He'll have to make more moves and pass more horses. And he does continue to drift in his races and in his works. And after quickish turnarounds of 30 and 28 days for his two Oakland scores for his Arkansas-centric owners who really wanted to win those races. He now must return really quick, quick for the third straight time, now in a mere 21 days for a trainer whose wheelhouse is 35 to 42 days. I think this is a lot to ask for a still-developing horse. Magna Moon has the potential to be an absolute monster in the future at Big Belmont. Belmont is the track that was made for this horse. I can see him wiring the Jockey Club Gold Cup in the fall, but I'm playing against him Saturday. He'll only be third or fourth on my all tickets. Again, I have to throw some talent out if I'm going to give, my, give myself a chance to make a really big score. All right, Salamini, uh, Bob Baffett, the 17. He really hasn't developed at age three. He repeatedly has been well beaten when facing some of the race's leading contenders. He hasn't changed leads in his last two when barely out kicking the very average combatant twice from minor spoils and couldn't get by a shrugged off by the excellent Magnum Moon quip late last out in the grade one Arkansas Derby. He can't win. But having evolved into a relatively deep closer, a grinder like this with a decent mile and pedigree has a chance with the right trip to chug along for third or fourth, and that's where I'll use him. All right, Vino Rosso, who is the Wood Memorial winner and also has the local uh, connections, Mike Rapoli and the St. Elias guys, all local guys. Uh, how about Vino Rosso? He has a long stride for a horse of his size, Mike, and like many such types, had trouble keeping up with more nimble rivals on the second turn at very, very quirky Tampa Bay. He disappointed twice there this winter versus grade two type fields. But when he went to Rumi or Aqueduct, when second time blinkers, stretching out to a mile and an eighth, benefiting strongly from pace and bias and committing to staying outside foes throughout. Vino Rosso sustained a long, steady run to overwhelm late the very decent nine furlong horse in Tice. Uh, jockey, that was the Wood Memorial. Now, Vino Rosso did move relatively early in that race. So even though the pace overall benefited him, I really liked the fact that he was able to move a little bit into the pace right out of the gate. He got stung a little bit by that. It did hurt him a little bit, but it gave him position ahead of the deepest of closers. And that ability to move a little bit early and then move a second time is very, very important in the Derby. His jockey, John Velasco, is a keen judge of young horses. Probably could be on Audible. In fact, could be on Audible if he wanted to. But he's believed in Vino Rosso all year, stays with him for the Derby. This horse is putting things together mentally, and on pedigree, on the way he moves, he's one of the few in here who truly, I think, is going to relish the stretch to a mile and a quarter. Now, he did lug in in the wood. That was a focus issue, I believe, and Velasquez continued correcting him after the wire. Brilliant schooling by a very experienced, very, very smart jockey, and I have no doubt that this horse has had that lugging in issue addressed in his training by connections who do things top, top notch in every single way. And indeed, Vino Rosso's his afternoon improvement has corresponded 
in the last few weeks and months with improved workouts. That's a combination I like to see. When horses are clicking in the morning and then clicking in the afternoon, one thing builds upon another. And I'll tell you something else, too. Nino Rosso hasn't always impressed me as the most light-footed of horses with the way he moves. But when I've seen him on that Churchill Downs track, and it stayed pretty much the same all week, and it, hopefully if the rain holds off, it'll stay pretty much the same on Saturday. Vino Rosso floats over Churchill Downs. His feet do not touch the ground. This horse moves so much better over that track than any other track I've seen him on. It's unbelievable. He's quick enough early to get decent position into the first term, despite the post. Uh, I think he's a now horse and a big win threat. All right, so we know the 19 and 20 are long shots, uh, combatant and Noble Indy, Noble Indy 19, combatant 20. So give us your thoughts. Uh, now, you do this in tiers on the, from first down, but all right, at the top level, who's on the first level? I have five horses that win threats, Mike. Go ahead. I'll put them maybe in order. Go ahead. I think they're, they're the likeliness of winning. Justify, Vino Rosso, Hofburg, Good Magic, My Boy Jack. Justify is going to be too short to bet. Dino Rosso is going to be a price I'm going to bet him to win. Hofburg, I have a feeling, could be the hot, wise guy horse and be undervalued. If he's 18, 19, 20 to one or more, I'll probably have something to win on him as a saver as well. Good Magic will be too short, and I just don't believe enough of him in him. My boy Jack will be huge. I'll have a little bit of a saver on him under any conditions. If the track is wet and especially sealed, I'll really have a sizable win bet on him. I think you can play this. A fi- those horses in a five-horse trifecta box for fifty cents, it costs thirty dollars. I would take a shot with a four-horse trifecta box for fifty cents, costs twelve dollars. Would justify out of it just in case you get lucky in that regard. You can play fifty-cent tri boxes with three horses, cost three dollars, using some mix and match combination of those five. Justify with two other horses. Uh, uh, horses, three horses without justify, mix and match. It's very inexpensive, and you can really score if you're right. You could also play justify in one slot in tries in supers and play the other four horses in the other slots. And maybe in a lower tier, add some horses who can suck up third or fourth. All of all would be my first ad. Lone Sailor, Salamini, they would be other ads. Now, uh, other than Justify, who obviously is going to be a heavy favorite, and the early betting, the guy who's gotten the money is my boy Jack, who's 5-1. to one. Uh, what, are the, what horse do you like, Vino Rosso, as your other horse behind Justify? V- Vino Rosso, the only horse I- I'll make a serious win bet if things go as I expect them to go, weather-wise, will be Vino Rosso. I will take a shot with him at a big price. My exotics will have both Justify and Vino Rosso substantially in the top slot. Thanks, Brad, very much. Appreciate it. Enjoy your uh, derby day. Thank you. Take care.